Hi, I'm Zibby Owens, the creator and host of the award-winning podcast that you're listening to right now, thank you so much, called Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. It is a daily podcast, 365 days a year, and each day we talk to an author about all of the things related to their career, their book, their life, and more in 30 minutes or less, because who has time? I am now an author myself, although I wasn't when I started this podcast, and you can get my new memoir, Bookends, a memoir of love, loss, and literature, wherever books are sold starting July 1st, and my children's book, Princess Charming. You can learn more about me at zibbyowens.com, but really, you're here to learn more about the authors, and that is what we're going to do. Also, be sure to check out all the other podcasts in the Zcast Podcast Network. You can learn more at zcastnetwork.com. Dot com and definitely check out those shows as well. Michelle Figueroa is the author of A Good Thing Happened Today. Michelle has 15 plus years of experience as a bilingual journalist, producer, and filmmaker, mostly for CNN on Espanol. Now Michelle runs the Good News Movement social media platform where she curates good news only because you are the good news. A Good Thing Happened Today is her first book published by HarperCollins. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books to discuss A Good Thing Happened. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a total pleasure. And I hope to keep spreading my message that good things are happening anywhere and everywhere in the world. I know. I love this mission of yours. Can you talk a little bit about that and the Good News Movement and your whole Instagram community and how you pick user-generated stories? And Let me hear the whole thing. I, I just love it. Thank you. So I'll start with the fact that as a reporter, I have been a freelance, they kind of call it a permalancer, permanent freelancer for different networks. And I had always been drawn to positive stories, but unfortunately I was finding that those weren't making the cut. So I had a treasure trove of good stories and I thought it was a shame that people weren't hearing them because my idea is that, yes, we have to hear the bad news. We have to be informed of what's happening. But there should also be equal value to good news. So I had an ear infection in bed the summer of 2018, and I decided to take a leap of faith and create my own media platform. I didn't really have lofty expectations at the time, but I I just said, let me just share good news. And little by little, it began to grow. And then it started to go really quickly and then even more quickly and then even more quickly. And So it's been amazing and it's really been a collective effort because I tell people when they ask me how many people are on my staff, I tell them 4.3 million because people are essentially producers. You know, they're filming things with their videos. They're sending me their good news. So it's really been a collective effort from all corners of the world. And it's been such a joy being part of that and filling people's news feeds with positivity because I I haven't heard of one person who says they don't like seeing good news. So how, like how many submissions do you get a day of stories that are good, good news stories? Let me see if I can do the backwards math. I know per minute, it's about one every three minutes. Wow. (laughs) So so yeah, it's, it's a ton. So that's part of the job is, you know, looking through all, all the submissions and trying not to miss any. I mean, inevitably we'll miss some, but but it's great. I mean, there's never a shortage of good news. So I think that's what people are really curious about because even reporters will tell, tell me, how do you find it? And I said, oh, it's, it's there. It's there. And, and there just never had been like a centralized method for, for people to send it in. So you're getting good news every one, every three minutes. How do you then pick which goes up on Instagram or which goes up where? How do you like work your way through it? Yeah, it's interesting because there isn't really, some people ask me, what subjects do you prefer? And honestly, I think it's kind of the same reporter instincts. I think both what I feel as a human, I think that's a big part of it. But it's also from my experience from reporting and kind of the stories that that were compelling to me and the ones that I thought had more of a story to them. So I think it's a combination, but a lot of it is just gut, you know, your feeling. And um, sometimes people tell me, I don't know if this qualifies as good news. And I'm like, well, if it made you smile, if it made you feel good, then I'm sure it'll make, you know, other people feel the same way. If it moved you, if it made you cry. And so, yeah, so it's not a very kind of technical process. It's more of a of like how it makes me feel. And I think kind of judging by 
my reaction, that's that that's when I say, okay, this is if I feel this way, maybe other people will too. Wow. So what made you then write the children's book? So funny enough, my first job out of, out of college was at Houghton Mifflin, Aww. which some people <laughs> might recognize with Curious George. Actually, there was a Curious George conference room, I'll remember, <laughs> for my time there. And I never thought I'd be on the other end of it, but I thought it was a perfect idea for kids that aren't online, which is, you know, the ki- the book is intended for children from four to seven, but anyone can read it. But for children that aren't online to get the message that they can be the good news. and Really, my hope with the book is that they feel inspired that they can make the change. You know, all these stories that are in the book are stories that are real, that happened, that were on my page. Um, Most of them revolve around kids doing good. So for me, it was kind of a reference book almost for kids to get ideas to how they can make the world a kinder place and uh, be the good news. And also a reminder to adults to open your eyes to good news. Sometimes we kind of walk down the street and we're focused on maybe our issues or our phone or what we have to do. And just taking a moment to observe your surroundings and the kind things that are happening, like someone helping an elderly lady cross the street, all the like beauty that's in the world to not miss out on it. So, so I hope this book kind of inspires people to, to tap into that. So I have four kids and my little, my little guys are seven and eight. And I just read the book before this to my daughter and we were looking at the pictures of the elephants and she wanted to know what there's a picture of two elephants and a man kind of wrapped in the trunk. And she wanted to know what the sacrifice was. That was the good news. Oh, that's a great question. So that is a pea farmer in Kenya who on his free time during drought season, he brings water to the animals so they can survive. And so now he actually, there's an organization that pays for him to do this, but otherwise a lot of the animals would die because no one was bringing water, providing water. So, so that was very sweet. He'd drive hours on his own dime. And that was actually from a real picture of him, of the elephant and the trunk wrapped around him. So that was, that was a really sweet, and it was really hard to pick which of the stories to showcase because obviously a book has a finite amount of pages. So that was really tough actually, but I, I hope that the ones I picked uh, resonate with kids and and they enjoy them. Amazing. Do you find yourself in your own sort of personal life having lots of good news? Like, do you feel like you're, do you (laughs) feel like you celebrate the little moments or that somehow like you've been blessed by so much good news, you want to share it? Or have you overcome the things that make you want to see the beauty and things? Like, where is this coming from for you? Well, it's funny. Even yesterday, I, the boathouse where I'm at right now, it's on a street, which name is it's Dutch, very long, and I didn't remember it. My phone was dead, and two complete strangers invited me into their home to charge to charge my phone, and I just became friends with them. And actually, my best friend arrived today, but yesterday I was on my own, and I said, hey, I wonder if I can make friends today. Well, it was kind of a, a fun journey. I made 10 friends, and I kind of went outside my comfort zone <laughs> and just asked people, hey, do you want to be my friend? <laughs> So wow. sometimes it takes is just having a little ask. And I notice on my page, that's one takeaway. I think maybe the most meaningful one from my page is that whenever anybody asks for help, there's never a shortage of people who want to help, who want to be kind and help someone in whichever way. So I see that here right now when I'm traveling and I'm on my own. But I think I've been blessed in so many ways uh, in general, even as a journalist. You know, journalism can be tough. But I've had guardian angels always giving me advice and and feedback. And I feel like everyone, all these people I've met have made me who I am, you know, including my own family, my friends and community. I mean, at the end of the day, I think our communities strengthen us and and make us who, who we are, you know, professionally and as people. So I feel like I'm a collection of all those experiences that I've had, good and bad, because I'll tell people, kids, I'd go to schools. Lately, I've been going to elementary schools to read the book, and I've been telling them I was rejected plenty of times from the news, you know, plenty of times. One year, I was rejected from doing local news, and the following year, I was given an opportunity to work for National Network News. So I tell them, don't let any other, you don't let anyone define you it can be easy to get discouraged if someone else is defining you and you think maybe I'll, I need to throw in the towel, but I think that's part of the process. And sometimes we see success stories of people, whether it's celebrities or acclaimed authors or in any profession, we don't see their flaws. You know, that doesn't come on, 
on screen or, or, you know, or in a, in a basketball game or what have you, that you don't know all the, all the failures that they've gone through. So I think, you know, all of us have seen a little bit of adversity, some more than others. And I think that's also why the stories resonate because a lot of the people that I've showcased are people that have overcome obstacles that many people can identify with. So there's always that, no matter where you're from in the world, there's always that um, the common thread, you know, that everyone's just trying to do the best they can in life and, and everyone has their own adversity. Wow. So if people listening have good news or want to read or watch mm-hmm. or whatever, how can they find you? How can they, what should so, they do? What are the next steps? Yes, definitely. If they have Instagram, that is where I hang out the most uh, <laughs> at good news underscore movement. But if they're on Facebook, we're also on Facebook. There's no underscore. It's just good news movement altogether. And then it's funny. We couldn't find a good, my husband helps me as well. And he manages the Twitter, but we couldn't find a really good handle. So right now we're good news chorus. And I think it's three. Mm. <laughs> so if you're on Twitter, we're there too. My son, who's 11, he does. in last summer, he did some updates, good news reporting. Oh. So that was really fun to to work together as a family and and bring this good news. I mean, the pandemic, I lost my one of my jobs. So I was a reporter and also a salesperson for a local TV station. I lost that job at the beginning of the pandemic, but it was a blessing in disguise because I could focus really on good news movement. And my husband was an opera singer and he lost a lot of his work during the pandemic. So, so that's a good news for us is that we've been able to create the movement and it's really been our job. I mean, it, it's a job, you know, looking for news, finding, sharing the news. You know, we take it, I take it as seriously as I do any news report that I've ever done because it's a huge platform. And I always try to make sure my information's correct. That's one thing that drives me nuts. Sometimes online, when I see misinformation, it goes viral. I'm like, no people, I got to check, <laughs> make sure what you're reading, you know, it is correct and double check with different sources. And so that's very important to me too. Uh, mm-hmm. as a journalist to not only bring good news, but also, you know, if I'm not sure about something, I don't post it. And I always try to just verify directly from the source. Hmm. It's amazing. How, yeah, on Instagram though, like when when people are, I'm sorry, when people are submitting their news, do they DM you with it? Like, I, yeah. I, like I want to start submitting good news basically. Like yes, where, please, what is my... <laughs> I want all your good news. Send me... I tell people, because someone's like, I'm sorry, I'm sending you to, and I'm like, no, that's the whole point of the more I get, the better. And yeah, if if people want to direct message me or there's an email button on Instagram, at least there's an email button, you click it and then I'll get the, I'll get the email. So that's a way to also submit. In terms of your, in terms of your platform in general and having this like offset your job, how do you, like, was monetization ever a goal for you of the good news movement or was it is it now or like, how does business interplay with this philanthropic endeavor you're really doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like a news service, right? So when the TV, you know, does the news, they do commercial breaks to pay for all that goes into it. So same thing with us, we find partners that really make sense with our brand that, that otherwise we might be sharing in our regular content. It's funny because people say they don't see the sponsored content, but we're very strategic with who we work for. Companies doing good in the world in some way. So, so yeah, we do that so we can we can pay, you know, for ourselves. And hopefully, it's not in a way that's too overbearing. Because of course, our objective is to to share good news. I mean, it's a it's it's a news service. And so, yeah, at the beginning, I didn't I didn't really think it would turn into into a business. I didn't really know how big it was going to get at all. So, so now that it has, yeah, we definitely have to keep support ourselves somehow. And we do, but always trying to do it with good judgment and never straying away from our, from our values and our, and our morals. I mean, we've always said we're not political. And I even got a call, an email from the White House. And I didn't, I didn't look at it because we're not changing who we are, our identity. And I think that's very important. It's a place. There are plenty of places for for all kinds of politics and all different kinds of news, but we keep it pretty pretty pure and uh, make sure we're feeding people just the truth, the good news as it is. Wow! Well, bravo to you. It's really amazing. Thank you, Sophie. Now that you've written this children's book, is there any advice you would give? I was actually at the dentist the other day and the hygienist for the kids or whatever the assistant was like, "I've written three children's books. Now what?" 
So what would you say to, to what would you say to her? Because I was struggling for an answer myself. Yeah, I guess it, it's different for each person. It's what fills them. Um, I actually met an author at this book talk in New York, Books of Wonder, and he wrote a really creative book about uh, bathtubs. Instead of kids being afraid of the bathtub, it was a bathtub being afraid of a kid. And I oh, just I love that book by Simon Rich. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was so inventive and creative and fun. And so I'd like to do something more creative, but I guess I would tell the person who's written three books and then they don't know what is kind of think about kind of what brings them joy in their life. And if, if maybe that could lead to ideas for what they could do next. For example, I was thinking of doing like a garden, like a good news movement garden to kind of beautify some spaces and, you know, have maybe followers we could fundraise or something but I like kind of making things tangible because online it's, it's nice. But when I'm like 90 years old, I could say, here's my book <laughs> or here's the garden it's growing. So I guess that's a very personal quest for each person, but maybe just to listen to what makes them happy and what's made them happy in the past. You know, what made you happy as a kid? What made you happy during college? What, what brings you joy now? For me, I love listening to positive stories. I always have. And so it was really you know, even though it's a business now, it really has been an extension of myself. It was never like, I'm going to do stories on this so I can sell. No, it's always been, this is who I am. So I think it's like really my, who I am kind of stretched out into, into a media platform. And I think being authentic is really important and people, hopefully they see that in, in what I do. So I think those two things, kind of searching for your joy and also staying authentic to yourself. Not try. I feel like in the reporting world, there was a lot of that, try to be like this or like this. And I, I think it's just nice. Uh, people want to just meet a real person. And so just staying true to yourself is the best thing you can do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for bringing good news and joy and all this positivity. And I keep, you know, in a dark time in a lot of ways, although it feels like one way or another, it's always dark time somewhere in the world. So having this as a resource is, is really wonderful. So congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Zibi. Thanks for having me on. Love your podcast and happy to, to think of any good news we can share together or send me yours whenever, whenever you'd like. Okay. Look out for it. (laughs) All right. Sounds good. Take Take care. care. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zibby Owens and at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Also sign up for my newsletter at ZibbyOwens.com and sign up for my virtual book club and meet lots of authors on Zoom every other week. Thanks so much to Steve and Ryan at Texture Sound for the sound editing. And thank you to Morning Moon Productions for providing this fantastic intro and outro music.